Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence. I'm Mike. Today we're talking about this ink. This is Kiwi Inks Quetzalcoatl. I learned how to say that because in college we had a whole uh, like course when I was talking about uh, Mesoamerican um, like deities and such. I want to say this is related to the Aztecs. Uh, there's also this uh, big dinosaur called the Quetzalcoatlus, which is uh, fun to say, Quetzalcoatlus. But Quetzalcoatl comes in these little 20 mil bottles, sorry, 30 mil bottles. They are, they have this little belly. I like kiwi inks. All the kiwi inks I've tried have been very cool. Uh, you can see here there's a little kiwi there. Uh, there is a nice swatch of the actual ink right there. You can see it's on the bottle. It's act this is a swatch, which I think is great. I love it when a maker does that. There's a little bit of, you can see the shimmer in there a little bit. There's definitely some in there. Opening up the bottle, you'll see it is this nice dark sort of burgundy color. You're not going to see that burgundy all that much in your normal writing because this ink has a ton of sheen and some very cool shimmer. It goes for about 20 bucks, uh, $19.95 on the Kiwi Inks website, which you'll find linked in the description. Audrey bought this ink for me at the um, uh, the San Francisco Pin Show in 2021, and I have had it in a pin ever since because this ink makes me happy to use. So check it out. Here it is on some paper, and if that doesn't look like a feathery serpent creator deity, I don't know what does. Look at that blue shimmer, that awesome green sheen, the cool red color. I uh, I really like this ink. You can also see in the text there, just, I mean, it just shifts all the time because there's so much sheen on top of there. In your normal writing, it's going to be a sheeny monster. And it's true, uh, that is true about it on all kinds of papers. It is just, uh, it is very good. This is my normal uh, Rhodia 80 grams per square meter paper. The flow here, I say uh, there's a very occasional hard start. I, I mean, very occasional. I have maybe had, I don't know, two or three hard starts on there. Maybe I got a hard start the day I wrote that little bit there and I was like, mm, it's hard starting a little bit. But uh, in general, fairly wet and I haven't had any problems uh, except for maybe once or twice. It's not persistent. This is the pen I've had it in, which, a, which is a Kara's Custom Ink, which is, uh, I don't know, it's not the right color, but I don't know, I decided to try it out in here. And it turns out, I love this ink in this pen. This is a, I think, medium nib Bach. Uh, they don't ever mark their nibs, so you really can't know. There's a little bit of sheen right there on the feed. And uh, man, it behaves super well in this uh, this pen for the most part. Um, these This pen will kind of like, if you don't watch it, it will unscrew itself just a little bit. So that may have contributed to the hard starts as well. It just kind of letting more air in and out than it ought to have. But uh, I haven't had any problems with that aside from that. Uh, performance on 20 pound paper is pretty darn good. There is some minor bleed. You see uh, right there, it's this line. And there's just a little bit of minor bleed just here and there. But this paper is hit or miss anyway, being 20 pounds, 30% uh, recycled. Uh, it's going to have some bleed from, like, I mean, everything. <laughs> I don't think that any, nothing has zero bleed. So, pretty good. I did get a little bit of smearing here, but that actually happened right when I was writing with it. You will, you can get smearing from this ink if you're using it on coated papers uh, in a wet nib or some such thing like that. Bach fine nib, I don't know, I think it's probably a medium. Whatever, whatever, past Mike, what are you talking about? But you can see a bunch of sheen even here on this uh, recycled paper. So, very cool. All right. Uh, and then, uh, comments, I just, I love this ink. I mean, look at, look at all this sheen. It's great. So let's do a little bit of a water test. I'll show you the chromatography. We'll look at it next to some other inks, you know, the whole shebang. So let's get some water on this thing. I don't know what this was. Must've been from a pre previous review bleeding through just a little bit. You can actually see that ink kind of like exploded. Whoa. Oh, 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 don't do that, Mike. Nope. Too much. Okay. Time to blot it away. You're going to make a huge mess. Will it stick, stick around? I don't know. <laughs> oh, so much pink. So much pink. Blot this away. Yeah, doing doing good. Okay, so a lot of pink came away, but uh, I think maybe you could kind of recover this. Uh, I'm not going to say this has really any water resistance at all. You can tell it was dots and lines. Maybe you'd be able to tell what those dots and lines were, <laughs> but this does not have water resistance. Among its uh, cool things are not uh, lots of water resistance, though. You know, it's uh, that's kind of how it goes. Okay, here's the chromatography for Quetzalcoatl. You can see, as you can see down here, nothing stuck around. There is 
Uh, no water resistance on this ink on this chromatography paper. You can, however, see the shimmer right there where the original line was because shimmer does not get pushed when you do chromatography. This is just pushing the ink up the paper. You can see lots of uh, like little orangey bits and some uh, red and pink, some dark stuff up here at the top. But uh, yeah, not a lot of complicated color going on in there. It's uh, kind of, you know, two or three notes, which is, oh, there's a little bit of, look at that in the back. Just a little bit of like magenta up there at the top. That's interesting. Interesting, because you can't really see that. Well, maybe you can see a little bit there, but whatever, man. That's pretty cool. Good chromatography. Not the not the most impressive chromatography. Here it is on my Colodex card. And you can see I did get a bit of smearing there. Uh, I just kind of like took my hand and like went like this over the top of the densely uh, or a sheeny part here. And it did smear a little bit, but not that much. And I'm not surprised. I mean, you can see how much sheen is left on top of this card. Like kind of a lot, right? In fact, it's actually masking a lot of the shimmer. Uh, in this ink, you'll see the shimmer sometimes, but... It's sheen first, then shimmer, then maybe red. You can see a little bit of that blue in there. No problem at all. Here in the writing sample, like this. Again, lots of sheen. Not too much shimmer showing through, but there is definitely some there. It's a very, very fine shimmer. And I should say that these are uh, these inks are all handmade uh, by Kiwi Ink. And so you can have them customized in a bunch of different ways uh, in terms of wetness and I think shimmer density and sheen, like all kinds of things for that, uh, that 20 bucks in that 30 mil bottle. So go check out their site. You can sort of customize your ink that way. All right, so there's Quetzalcoatl. We've got, uh, this is Ancient Charm, number 15, The Phoenix, which has a similar underlying color, but an entirely different shimmer profile. We're not doing sheen here, really, and we're doing gold shimmer, and lots of it instead of the blue. Then I've got here, uh, Jihirban Rouge, Rouge Hematite, which I've never been the biggest fan of. You can see it's got gold shimmer, it's got green sheen. But this ink has been really hit or miss for me. Like sometimes it's very impressive and other times it just kind of falls flat and it just kind of falls flat here weirdly. I don't, I don't know why. I don't, I don't love that. You've got uh, Diamine Vintage Copper, which came in this year's ink vent, the uh, 2021 ink vent that I got from Lemur Ink. This also, like uh, one of the previous ones, has gold shimmer and this kind of rusty red. This is more of a red, I think, than this one. And then lastly, Die Mine, all the best. This is from this year's Ink Vent as well. Very similar sort of base color. Uh, also has a bunch of sheen, but has more shimmer. So this one is more cranberry, whereas this one is more, I don't know, kind of an orangey burgundy, I guess, like an orangey red. So similar kind of composition, but different base color, different balance between sheen and shimmer. It's really interesting what you can do with these inks, uh, even when you've got the same kind of ideas, you know? Cool, right? Okay, so that's Kiwi Ink Quetzalcoatl. I don't have anything quite like it. I think if I was going for non-shimmer uh, inks, probably um, there's one called Jungle Volcano from Krishna. I don't know if they actually make that anymore. I got that a zillion years ago, uh, but that one actually didn't flow nearly as well as this one. That one would tend to dry up in the nib. This one, on the other hand, I haven't had dry up in the nib hardly at all, uh, if at all. So... Really cool. So that's Kiwi Inks Quetzalcoatl. Here it is on a little, a little dip card. Uh, check this out over at Kiwi Inks. Not too many places sell them. A couple of places I think might be uh, might distribute them a little bit, but you can just get them at Kiwi Inks site. They're out in California and, uh, you know, totally worth the visit. Tell them I said hi. That's it. See you later. Peace out. Hello, folks. Welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Hello, folks. Welcome to Ink Dependence. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. Hello folks, my name is Mike and today Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike.